Okay. Um, and should I start? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, to give it in a nice little package. Okay. I think the most I know is that George Fox Hello. is the one who there. got it started. George Fox and his lady friend, Margaret Hello. Fell. In the 1640s, 1650s kind of time in England. George Fox had a revelation where it sort of came to him that if people are created in the image of God, then everyone is equal. And there's no way that anyone can have a higher right to speak to God than anyone else. Uh, And he never really intended to create a new religion. He just wanted to change Christianity. He brought these beliefs of integrity and equality and things that were sort of frowned upon in time. He ended up being thrown in jail. And as that was happening, there was a man named James Naylor. Who was said to be another leader, almost in the same rank as George Fox. Hi there. But he was a bit more, I guess, deviant. And um, he rode around in England. Other Quakers were flying around saying, like, holy, holy, and stuff like that. And, like, they arrested him because they thought he was trying to like pretend he was Christ or like claiming he was Christ. Well, he said that he wasn't claiming he was Christ. People were following him for the peace of Christ that was within him. But still, he was tried and convicted and all this stuff. And instead of being hanged, he got branded with a B on his forehead for blasphemer. Um, it sort of ruined like the Quakers, like, um, mojo i guess because <laughs> they believe that Naylor was like the leader but george fox thought that that was totally wrong wrong that's why quakers was found not to have such a huge authority figure it's like there aren't leaders in quakerism it's just all quakers did was question the leadership everyone does their own thing and leads quakers were thrown in jail often quakers are put in jail by huge numbers which is one of the reasons they came to America. 1652, where the Quakers sailed across the ocean to the New World to avoid religious persecution. Like a lot of other religious groups. Then they were burned as witches. (gasps) Puritans thought two things were exactly from the devil, and it was dancing and Quakers. And then William Penn, oh, yeah. obviously the founder of Pennsylvania, uh-huh. he made the land that he had of kind of a safe haven for Quakers and um, other religious groups that mm-hmm. sought mm-hmm. acceptance mm-hmm. due to mm-hmm. Quakers' mm-hmm. religious mm-hmm. preferences and moral tones. They had very good relationships with the Indians there. And Well, there's a guy named John Woolman, Hello, and he went to school How's it going? Um, with... Indians and Quakers. He first started off as a clerk and he had to do bill of sales for slaves and that's when he found out he couldn't no, like do, do it. Like that's when he found out his passion for like fighting slavery. Get out of here. He also went to Philadelphia for like the big meeting. He convinced all the friends to get rid of slavery and this was in like the 1700s, way before the Civil War. Um, so a lot of Quakers come this way kind of led the abolitionist movement. There's a little thing called the Underground Railroad, which is important for freedom of African Americans. And it was also run by a large number of Quakers. And then if we skip forward, in the 19th century, there was the great separation in America of Quakers, which is separated the Orthodox Quakers and the Hicksites Quakers. Um, during World War One and Two, and I'm sure in Vietnam too, Quakers were conscientious objectors. And so, the American Friends Surface Committee was founded during World War One to help restore Asia from war. They eventually won the Nobel Peace Prize. The end. Well, thank you. The end. <laughs> that were 
sort of frowned upon in time. <laughs> Perfect. It looks really good. As that was happening, there was a man named James 